This is a demo of the Remote Deposit OCR check scanning via the Jack Henry integration. To start that integration, select Contributions, Remote Deposit, then select Enroll Now. Here you will be prompted with a form, complete the information, and press Submit. After you have been onboarded, you can access this feature by selecting Contributions on the left navigation and then selecting Remote Deposit. Only users with the Remote Deposit permission can access this feature. I'll go ahead and click on Remote Deposit, and you see this takes us out of OneChurch software and to Jack Henry's portal. You can see here in the URL where it says Profit Stars. To start processing checks, select Transactions on the left navigation, and then click on Remote Deposit. Please note that when you log in, everyone in your church will log in under the same account. In this example, it shows one church RDC, but your church will have a specific username. Everyone in your specific church will log in with the same Jack Henry account. This will take me to the open deposit screen where you can see any previous deposits that were done. If there are any deposits that need to be deleted, you can select that deposit batch and then select a delete deposit in the lower right which I'll do here because we had a test batch. To create a new deposit, I'll select Create New Deposit in the lower right. This will take me to the New Deposit screen, where the system will check to see if you have a scanner connected. If this is your first time accessing this screen, the system will send you through a setup protocol to connect your scanner. This is required to create deposit batches. We also have help articles in our help center that helps you set up your check scanner. However, Jack Henry will guide you through the steps within their portal. After the scanner has been discovered, the middle panel will disappear and you'll be ready to create a batch. One thing to note, you cannot create new deposit batches or even see old deposit batches unless you have a scanner connected. If no scanner was detected, that Create button would be dim, and you would also not be able to access any deposits from the previous screen. Let's go through each field. Location is the bank in which the checks will be deposited. You can have multiple locations or bank accounts where your checks can be deposited into different banks. In the demo, we only have one location, which is why this is a read-only field. If you had multiple, you would be able to select which one. Payment type, you have two options here. You would be able to select which one is appropriate for your context. The next field is deposit name. The system will auto-generate a deposit name, but you should change the deposit name based upon your church's naming convention. In general, it is recommended to have one batch created for each designation. For example, you have one batch for tithes, another for missions, another for something like Christmas offering. This will make the allocation process easier on the one church side. It's not required, but it would speed up the process, which we will show later. On the one church side, there are ways to bulk update the designations for the batch. For this example, I'll choose the date, and let's say this is for the 1045 AM service, and the designation is tithes. Next, we have the number of checks we plan to scan. For this example, I'll choose one, and the amount is $105.68 which is the amount I'm planning on scanning in. One note on these two fields, they are called the control and they are not editable after the deposit has been created. Make sure you enter the correct number of checks that you intend to scan and the aggregate total of those checks. This is meant to act as a checks and balances. If a mistake was made and you need to change either of these numbers, you'll be required to delete this batch and create a new batch. Everything looks good for this example, so I'll select create to create this batch. This will take me to the next screen where the system will once again check for a scanner. The scanner has been successfully registered and I'm ready to start scanning. So now I will go ahead and scan a fake check. You can see the check has been scanned into the system front and back of the check. Now there is not a back of a check because this is a fake check that I used just for the demo. But for a real check, the back portion will be visible here. Even though the check has scanned, you will notice that it did not register a deposit amount or the MICR number. This is because there is an OCR process happening in the background. And even though it is very quick, it will take a little bit before you're able to see that number register within the system. If you'd like to see it quickly, all you need to do is select the refresh button. You can see that the number here is correct and that it actually read the MICR number as well. 
If you do accidentally scan the same check twice, which I'll do here, you'll notice that you get an alert. I refresh the page. You notice I get this icon that says duplicate MICR, meaning that you have scanned the check twice. It's also possible that the donor has written two checks, so it will allow for multiple checks from one donor, but it will flag them for review so that you can check whether or not this was intentional. You can select the trash can icon to delete any of these transactions. When you select this option, you'll receive a pop-up that will give you some options when dealing with this transaction. For now, I'll select delete. If you'd like to rescan a particular transaction, all you need to do is select this icon here. Then it will show you what was previously scanned and allow you to rescan. This next part is optional, but the system will allow you to create customers or donors within Jack Henry itself. All you need to do here is double click the row. This will take you to the details of the scan. You notice there is a customer field. If you select the plus button, you'll be able to input your donor information. You can choose a customer number. Keep in mind that this customer number is used by OneChurch software when bringing this information into OneChurch software. The customer number in Jack Henry is considered the envelope number in OneChurch software. This means that you can create a customer number within this SmartPay Jack Henry system and it will be used as the envelope number in OneChurch software. This is one way to link donor information found in Jack Henry to OneChurch software, but this is not required. You can leave this information blank as well as you don't have to create customers within Jack Henry. OneChurch software will still try to match the donation to a donor. OneChurch software will look at the account and routing number and if that information is already in OneChurch software, it will appropriately match this donation with the donor. Either way, you will be able to review the information captured in Jack Henry within OneChurch software and make necessary adjustments. I will cancel this and go back to the deposit view by selecting the button in the top right. Here you can continue scanning checks in and then when finished, select the complete deposit button in the lower right. Selecting this button will not complete the deposit itself, but it will take you back to the batch screen where you can finish the process. Before we do that, just one quick note. If you look at deposit status, it has control. This is the numbers we input at the beginning of the process. One check for $105.68, and then it shows what was scanned. One check for $105.68. Make sure these two numbers match completely before completing this deposit. Now this is based upon default settings within the system. It looks to make sure that the control and the scan match completely. You do have some leeway to modify these, but if you try to complete this deposit in the current settings, it will be rejected. Please keep this in mind. Also know that this can be modified to allow for more leeway. I'll select complete deposit, which will take me back to the deposit screen. This has not yet been submitted or deposited. To do that, you need to select the check boxes on the left of all of the batches that you'd like to deposit. And now in the lower right, select close deposits. You will receive a confirmation pop-up and then confirm by clicking close. You'll receive another confirmation, select okay and you see that there are no open batches within these open deposit screen. At this point, the batch has been fully deposited. The funds will go into the church's bank account and the batch information will come into OneChurch software. Let's take a look at that. Click on RDC user and log out. Now you'll be taken into OneChurch software. Select contributions and batches you can see here that the SmartPay Remote Deposit Batch has automatically come into OneChurch software. And there's nothing you need to do to bring that information into OneChurch software. It will do it automatically. And this happens in near real time. Now you'll notice that it says unallocated, and that means that there are contributions in this batch that have not been allocated to a designation. So let's click on that batch to make edits. Here you will see a warning sign that there are unallocated contributions. But here you see the amount and the number of transactions match what was in SmartPay. If I select this, you can see the transaction details. You can see the front and back of the check if you click on those images. And then here you just need to select the designation and choose the correct allocation. 
Here you also have the option to link this to a person profile. Now this was not linked automatically because we used a fake check and there's no one in the system that matches the details found in that transaction. It looked for the account number, the routing number, nothing matched. So we can link this to a person. Now you can match the transaction to the correct designation one by one, like I've shown you there, but it's faster to select this option here, switch to check view. And this will allow you to link to the donor and to the designation quickly or in bulk. So in this example, we have a check from John Doe. We can link this to that profile, just select that and then type in John Doe. Now there's no one in the system with that name. If there were, we could quickly link them to that individual. So for example, I'll pick someone, Ralph Henry, you see the designation amount, and then we can choose the designation that we would like to link that transaction to. As I mentioned earlier, we can also do this in bulk. If we had multiple transaction, we could link them all to a particular designation quickly. For this example, I'll choose tithes, select update, and you can see all of that information has been changed can also make a modification if necessary. You'll notice that after all the changes have been made, the warning signs have gone away, and now you can close the batch, which can be done by selecting the action close batch button or by selecting open and closing the batch here.